Hey, how's it going? Uh, so I am Taylor Page. I am a freelance web developer and a Shopify expert based out of the Springfield, Missouri area. Uh, I'm just going to go over some real quick uh, kind of housekeeping stuff since this is a live stream. want to make sure everybody has a chance to potentially um, chime in with questions or anything like that that they might have. Uh, you'll see me kind of occasionally look over here. I'm looking at another monitor just to make sure that everything's looking great for the stream. Uh, but for the most part, I'm going to try to obviously keep my focus over this way. Uh, there's also a little bit of a delay. So if you do have questions or things like that, um, you know, I'm definitely going to try to make sure that I do get to them. But if it seems like I'm not responding, it might just be because I haven't seen the question yet or it's taken a little bit of time for the stream to catch up for you in real time. Uh, so I can see chat in real time, but I can't uh, necessarily uh, obviously answer you in real time if uh, the stream is running a little bit behind. So also real quick, uh, you know, Lindsay, my sister is in the chat. She does uh, a lot of help for me. I call her the professional chaos organizer over here. Um, with my my little company, the Pages Media, so I'm a freelancer, um, but that's the, the company that I do business under. So Lindsay, if you can say hi in the chat too, that would be great. Uh, Lindsay's going to also be including some links and stuff throughout um, when you know applicable for some of these things. So that way, uh, there's actually um, maybe something you can click out and read yourself because uh, I'm going to just really try to hit high level over. Um, overview of a lot of different things rather than go real in depth into some of these things. And so I want to provide some information for you um, really about speed optimization on your Shopify website, not just from the sense of, you know, it's about how fast your, your, your page speed loads. Um, you know, it's, it has more to do with a couple of other metrics. It's focused on um, mobile usability, um, you know, and then UX or user experience and a couple of other metrics that kind of are associated with that. And so we're going to take a look at all of those metrics other than just one single page speed score. Um, also tell you kind of how Google comes up with that page speed score, because when we do see that, that is actually um, a culmination of a couple of different scores that just gets condensed down to one single score. So that's why I typically tell folks it's not good for us just to focus on that initially. Uh, we really want to focus on the key metrics that make that up. So that's core web vitals, and I'm going to get into that here in a minute. So, um, but I do I do think it's important to kind of give you some background information about, um, you know, basically why this is important, uh, and then to give you the power to go back and potentially make some of these changes yourself. A lot of folks think that they have to get a Shopify developer involved, they have to get rid of all of their apps. Um, you know, and all of their images and all this other stuff just to make sure that they're getting a really fast page speed score. Um, and my suggestion is going to be, you know, that's not necessarily uh, something you want to do because you'll also see conversions plummet, right? You're getting rid of your really nice imagery that you paid for. You're getting rid of a lot of apps that help with functionality of your website for folks. Um, those are not necessarily things that I would say you should just do without a strategy involved. And so we'll talk about kind of how you can audit your website yourself and then move into um, basically a strategy moving forward that promotes good core web vitals. And then after that, we start using more of that page speed score as a baseline test, more so than an actual letter grade, which is what I think a lot of people get into. Um, and so I'm going to uh, start off by just jumping in here and sharing my screen. Whoops. And so this all kind of kicked off uh, way back in 2018. Google decides that, hey, speed is now, um, you know, a factor for this. And so, you know, this kind of progressed over time here where we started moving away from this idea of just content being the only factor. There were a lot of uh, negative tactics that were kind of used in that. So everything from keyword stuffing um, to a couple of other, you know, kind of like not so great black hat tricks, right? And so basically that's moved away from that concept now to where we consider a more holistic view of metrics in order to promote um, some ranking factors there. So um, this is just kind of an example, but most of what y'all are familiar with is probably going to look something like this. And I'm going to show off uh, my page speed score here. So that way you can see, um, you know, it's a 64. So I think a lot of people, when you first start talking to people about page speed, um, or at least when I um, hear from a lot of people about page speed, people are really focused on trying to get as close to a 100 as possible. 
Um, and that's just not something you necessarily need to worry about. Not that my site is perfect. Um, there's definitely some things, we'll cover this even today, that there's some things that I need to hit. Um, I recently moved away from um, a Next.js based website to a Shopify website. Uh, kind of makes sense for a guy that works on Shopify to move his website to Shopify, right? Um, but so in doing so, I obviously haven't had time to properly assess a lot of different things because I've been more focused on trying to make sure like, you know, necessary uh, content is available. So, um, but typically this is what happens. Folks reach out to me because this score, you know, this is a bad letter grade, right? Uh, most of us will convert this. We'll go back to grade school. A 64 is what, like a D. And so obviously that's not great. Um, if you know, grew up in home like mine and stuff, parents probably cared about your grades and a D wasn't great. And so, um, you know, we, we want something like in the nineties or something along those lines. Uh, and we'll talk about where this page speed score comes from, because I think that's important to understand as well when we're talking about page speed um, and this, because this is the number usually people are most worried about. Um, from, from my perspective as a web developer, most people didn't care about performance. Um, they didn't care about your page speed until Shopify stuck that right there in the dashboard. Uh, and then obviously Google really started harping on the whole like, hey, we need, really need to make sure that this is performant um, and doing well. So just a couple of um, little bits of insight there into what that looks like. So if you have worried, wondered where that comes from, this is how your score is calculated. And this is a um, Shopify link um, on their help docs. So this is the online store speed report. Um, you'll see that it links out uh, to the speed report and a couple of other things as well. It talks about the importance of speed uh, and where that score comes from. But I do want you to take a look at this because you'll see a lot of fluctuation in your page speed score. And that'll happen for a couple of different reasons. One of those reasons being that, um, you know, it can change a little bit from product to product. So if we're using a different product template, um, Google or Shopify, I'm sorry, Shopify, you basically looks at uh, specific collections and product traffic over the past seven days. Um, so the ones that have the most traffic over the past seven days. And so instances where we're serving different templates, uh, you could actually see different results based on those templates, right? Um, so, you know, it, there's a little bit of variance there. Uh, we can also see a little bit of variance when it comes to Shopify um, apps and those sorts of things that we're loading as well. So apps have to rely on a server somewhere else. It's managed by that company. Um, or they're probably, you know, hosting through another company kind of type thing. And so sometimes there's just really slow load times for those things and different different things that um, contribute to that there. And I'll show you kind of where to focus on uh, when it comes to that, when we're looking at these page speed reports, trying to figure out how to assess and prioritize uh, what we're trying to do here. Okay, so another component to this, and I wanted to talk about this real quick as well, uh, going back to why a lot of us care about uh, page speed optimization uh, and those sorts of things. So Google not only talked about 2018, they started off saying, hey, speed's going to start becoming a factor. Um, then in 2020, we came out with the announcement of, hey, there's mobile first indexing for the whole web. So what does that really mean? You can read a lot of information about this, but it does sound basically what it sounds like. Google is expecting your website to be responsive and to perform well on mobile. And because of that, websites that don't perform well on mobile are not gonna be prioritized over traffic um, necessarily. So you obviously want that to be performing well. Uh, you can go over here, this uh, mobile first indexing uh, best practices. I'd really recommend that you take a look at this link as well. This is really helpful information that's linked out from here. And thank you, Lindsay, for throwing that in the comments there. Um, but yeah, that's that's a has a really good bit of traffic here. Um, traffic, I'm sorry, information here, uh, because this is talking about um, the biggest thing here. You know, most sites have shown search results are good to go from the first indexing. 70% of those shown in search results have already shifted over. So, um, you know, people have been moving towards, you know, responsive design, mobile first design, all those sorts of things for a while. Uh, and that's just something that Google is trying to obviously uh, account for because, you know, if your website's like most anybody else's, over 80% of your traffic is gonna be mobile. So it makes sense that we would want to serve really good mobile traffic. So again, this is more just backstory into this because, um, you know, when we're talking about speed optimization, those scores that we see too, I, sh I should have mentioned this when we were looking at this, 
um, you know, in your Shopify dashboard and even in the PageSpeed reports when we take a look at that. Uh, it's going to show you your mobile scores first. And the reason for that being is everything should be mobile first, mobile first. We want to make sure it looks good on your phone. It performs well on your phone. Um, the same way it's going to perform well on users' phones. Okay. Uh, this is just some additional information about page speed, evaluating page experience for a better web. Uh, basically, this kind of introduced that initial push. So we talked about mobile first, but then this kind of continued to push into now uh, Google announces here that we're going to be looking at core web vitals. So again, this is way back in May of 2020. So Google has been promoting core web vitals, this shift, this move away from something as simple as just a page speed score itself um, to something more like uh, something more comprehensive like core web vitals. And so this kind of talks a little bit about this. Um, and this is a really good example of a cumulative layout shift. If you take a look at this video here, where you can kind of see something loads in late and it pushes it down. And instead of, you know, hitting no go back, it actually places an order. So this is uh, a great example of one of the core web vitals. The key core web vitals is, is cumulative layout shift or CLS. Uh, and we'll take a look at some of these things and breakdowns. Uh, but again, just I, th I thought that was a really good visual that I need to show you as well. And there's uh, that is linked as well over here in the chat. And so uh, just something to take a look at. But this talks a little bit about some of those things. So the biggest core web vitals that contribute to, um, you know, search signals, rank signals, those sorts of things. That's what they're talking about here with these search signals for page experience. Um, largest contentful paint. That's this guy here. It makes up one of your biggest metrics uh, when it comes to the speed there. Uh, first input delay. So it has to deal with, um, you know, as things are loading, when are they actually able to interact with the page itself? And then that visual stability that we saw in that quick example there had to deal with that cumulative layout shift. So we want to make sure that uh, information is not moving around the page. I often refer to it as page jank um, for that movement. Uh, we just don't want things to be moving around a lot as it's loading. Uh, that doesn't create a good experience for your users. And in some instances, obviously, it creates undesirable click events, like in that instance where someone was trying to go back and they instead purchased something and started moving through that process. Um, obviously, a huge conversion killer. So that's definitely something that we don't want to include. Um, and so it talks about this basically having to deal with um, you know, it being part of ranking signals. Now, I really want to clarify because Google has done a very good job clarifying, being super, super clear on this in that. So just because you score 100, like across the board, like let's say we did that, um, it does not mean that your page um, or your website, you know, your products are going to be served first no matter what, right? And so uh, content is always going to be king when it comes to search. So if someone punches something in the keyboard, uh, it's not going to just serve a website that's hitting hundreds over another website that has um, good content, but it's like really slow, right? Uh, so first and foremost, Google is going to consider that content piece. What I typically see it described as, although John Mueller over at Google has said specifically it's not a tiebreaker, so we won't call it a tiebreaker necessarily, but um, as far as a website that has really good content as far as quality, um, and then, you know, like your website, right, and then a competitor's website who has like close to and or similar quality for a search query result, um, Google's going to take a look at which one of those may or may not be passing core web vitals. And that's definitely something that can give you an edge over competition to be served higher in search results if your website is passing for core web vitals. Notice that I didn't say if your website is scoring a 60 and theirs is only scoring a 55 or a 50. That's not how it works. Uh, it is possible for you to have a higher score but not be passing core web vitals. Google cares about your core web vitals and not your page speed score. So um, that's something that, you know, I'd really encourage you to take a look at with this documentation and stuff like that. Moving away from this mindset of your page speed score is everything. Um, you know, real high level, once we get to the point where we're passing for core web vitals, then we start paying attention to page speed as a baseline. So you're gonna hear me say that over and over and over again because it's an effective strategy that works. Um, bah, bah, bah. Okay, so this is basic, basically um, when Google actually decided to go ahead and launch and push 
page speed um, over, or the page experience, I'm sorry, over into Google search. They announced in November, this was gonna be done sometime and really we thought we had until May. Didn't happen until, oh, it's gonna happen in June. And then it didn't happen actually until August of 2021. And so that's something uh, just to be aware of uh, more so as far as the timeline thing. They didn't change any of the real information here as far as what signals we were looking for. Um, it's just something that uh, finally kind of got finalized more so of like in November was like, hey, this is what's going to happen. Y'all need to prepare for it kind of type thing. Okay. All right. So what are Core Web Vitals? We talked about why Core Web Vitals are important. Google did a really good job starting all the way back in 2018, talking about how they were starting to move considerations for page speed, how they were starting to move considerations for mobile first. And then after that, they further clarified by creating a series of metrics called core web vitals that they're gonna actually use as an assessment. And so that's where we got core web vitals. And so scrolling down here, you can read a little bit more. This kind of gets a little bit nerdy. Um, so if you're not super interested in that, I wouldn't um, really spend too much time on this. This would be something like your developer um, team sh should just be made aware of or have them take a look at it kind of type thing. So that way they can be cognizant of uh, some of those metrics and how to like test and like move through those things. Because um, not all web developers do focus on that, uh, you know, and it's not because they're not excellent at their job or anything like that. It might just not be part of the scope of work they've been provided. So I work on lots of websites um, where uh, my job is not necessarily to improve the page speed. And so, um, you know, we might have a score in the single digits and I can see some low hanging fruit and I'll bring that up. But it's something that obviously, you know, the team has to sign off on every website that I'm working on. Uh, is not passing for Core Web Vitals because it might not be part of the scope of our work. So that's just something to kind of take into consideration. So if you can give folks these resources, point them to this webinar, um, I think that's great. So again, uh, sorry, this is just these, these big key metrics. None of that's changed really since they first announced that, um, you know, back in 20, 2020 here. Um, that these were going to be the metrics that we need to focus on. And these are the metrics that we're focusing on today, though they are starting to kind of implement some additional metrics. I won't get super deep into that, um, but it's just something to kind of be made aware of. This is an ever evolving series of metrics, uh, and it's going to continue to just change how we approach these things in the future. Um, and some of this has to deal with just over time, um, you know, ways to uh, promote uh, usability, um, accessibility, and a couple of other things on websites. And so I think it's just uh, something that's going to continue to to be a thing to be um, mindful of or be on the lookout for. So if you scroll down more, it'll talk about some additional uh, reports. So the, the user experience report, page speed insights, which is the one that we're going to um, use quite a bit and the one that I'm going to recommend. And then obviously Search Console, you might actually see something in Search Console that has to deal with Core Web Vitals reports. Um, and so that's something I'd really encourage you to use. Uh, it's very helpful, uh, really good stuff as far as what it can do because it'll actually send you automated reports. So from a um, technical SEO side of things, you need to be set up in Google Search Console. Uh, just, I mean, just because, especially if we're talking about like concern for indexing and ranking and all these different things or what have you. Um, you need to make sure you're set up in that and then Google will actually do that work for you. It'll send you an automated report of, hey, we detected a cumulative layout shift that wasn't previously there before on this page. Uh, you might wanna take a look at this. Then you'll have the opportunity then to verify when it's resolved and then Google will let you know uh, basically that they've confirmed it has or it has not been resolved. It's really handy. So make sure if you're not on that, I think uh, I'm gonna cover a bit of that today. Um, but if you're not on Search Console, make sure that you are because it's it's super helpful. Um, and that's not the, the key um, piece here. So if you want to get real intense, like I said, this gets really developer-y. So I think further down, you're probably not super worried about some of these other items. But again, it's just a good thing I want to make sure to, to go ahead and reference in here. Here's some additional uh, recommendations for workflows with the specific Google tools. So the nice thing is, you know, you can use these to audit, improve, and monitor your website effectively. Uh, you know, this is a, a really good way to do this. Uh, something I really appreciate about Google is access to all these free tools. And so, you know, they're the ones that are kind of like ruling in on like what this looks like, right? They're giving us this 
um, series of metrics and they're the ones that are saying whether we did or did not pass this series of metrics and so it's a good way for us to take a look at this information from the perspective of Google uh, and that's the one that we're in most instances pretty concerned about we're concerned first about customers and then about Google and sometimes we have to switch those because you can't sometimes get customers without that piece right and so it just should all be part of your strategy here so really good information in here as well um, I know we're linking these informations in the chat because Lindsay's doing an awesome job. Um, so make sure you check these out, add this to your read later or whatever. Uh, some of it you won't really have to worry about, uh, but it is something that um, I do recommend you at least take a look at to try to be aware of some of these tools. So if you're um, working with someone like me or even as yourself, this is something you can develop internally with your team. Oops, I need to scroll down a little bit so that's not in the view there. But this is just a simple workflow uh, to really ensure your forward vitals stay healthy. So it, it seems really simple, but I think it's a really good suggestion as to how to kind of like work through some of these pieces in here. Um, so it's definitely something for you to consider uh, implementing, like I said, into your own internal processes or something along those lines. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So we're going to start getting into a little bit more specifics here. So I'm like 20 minutes in of like explaining like why this is super important, why we need to focus on core web vitals instead of page speed, because you can see there after looking through all of that information from Google, we didn't see anything referenced as far as your page speed score itself, right? Uh, Google consistently talks about the page experience and your core web vitals as part of that page experience. And so nowhere are you going to see that hey, just based on your page speed score, this is how we're serving content. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, I know when we're talking about this a lot, that's really what we're looking for. So this is a really simple article um, that I did uh, you know, last year. And so a lot of the information still works really well. It's just real high level overview of how you maybe should approach taking a look at some of these things. Um, images and apps being the biggest thing, you know, trying to get rid of some JavaScript stuff where possible. Um, I talk about some things that you will probably need a developer. Um, if you're already working with a developer, you can have them breeze over this because they can look at options for you to conditionally load apps, make sure you're preloading, pre-connecting, um, DNS prefetching resources, um, loading on interactions in some instances too. These are all just things that are like a, a way for you to take a look at this. Um, from both a non-developer and a developer standpoint. So hopefully that's helpful. And again, just really want to harp on this um, and we'll cover this here <laughs> as well. Uh, page speed isn't a grade. And so um, kind of show you what that looks like here in a moment. Okay. So I did want to cover um, this real quick because, you know, this is the page speed insights report. Uh, so this is using what's called Lighthouse. In the background, this is a developer tool that Google developed uh, a certain point in time. So you're going to see here, um, based on this tool, and I want to walk through certain parts of this because this is what you can use to audit your own website. You can determine then where to focus things on. Uh, so I'll do I do page speed audits with folks, um, and so you know speed optimization, page speed audits, core web vitals audits. You know you can call it whatever you'd like. But this is typically the tool that I'm working with first and foremost, and then what I will train folks on. So this is usually something that I get paid to do that I thought would be helpful um, from everyone's experience to try to see what they can do themselves. So you'll see here, we'll scroll down. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Right here, you can see that there's a little section that says there's no data. Discover what your real users are experiencing. Uh, that's because my website doesn't have enough traffic yet. Uh, to promote uh, a core web vitals assessment. So you'll see this here right now with the way the tool is currently set up if there's not enough traffic. So I've never seen a hard number on what this looks like because I've worked with some people who have in the thousands of views a month and I'm really, you know, might get a thousand views a month kind of type thing. Um, and those some of those folks won't even have one. And then I've seen folks with only a thousand views have a core web vitals assessment. So um, there's a couple of other factors that have to deal with that, but basically that's real user data. So Google is not able to compile a core web vitals assessment unless it has enough of that traffic. So in a lot of instances when I'm working with folks, um, and if you don't see a core web vitals assessment, I'll show you real fast what that does look like. You should see something like this guy up here, core web vitals core web vitals assessment is passed. So you'll have information for that. Um, if you don't see something like that on there, your primary focus should probably be focusing on traffic, 
first. Um, then after you get to that point where you get traffic and those sorts of things, then you can really start focusing on that because uh, we'll have some best guesswork available uh, that I'll talk to you about here in a little bit here when it comes to being able to pass that when you do have enough traffic. But really without that traffic, uh, we're kind of uh, shooting in the dark a little bit. So, all right, so back to this guy here because I don't want to necessarily... Um, spend too much time focusing on other websites. Like I said, we'll, we'll cover some of this information, but I really want to like work through the tool here at the moment. So this is typically, even with that stuff, what people will focus on. There's one single metric that says 68. And so everybody's thinking 68 out of 100 is not great. Um, so first of all, I want to like point out a couple of things. So this bar at the top here, this is the bar that we're looking at as far as uh, individual pages. So that's something to note as well. This tool only looks for one URL at a time. Uh, so it'll give us a report or a score based on mobile. You can click on this tab and it'll give you the desktop score. Oh, look at that, it's like 95. Everyone likes, really likes to see that 95. However, I'm very disappointed in this 95 because of this metric right here, cumulatively at shift. If you recall from us looking at Core Web Vitals reports, whoops, if you recall from looking at the Core Web Vitals reports, that cumulative layout shift, <clears throat> excuse me, um, is one of the key metrics. So at the moment, um, even though all of this other stuff looks really great on desktop, oh no, all this other stuff looks really great on desktop, uh, I actually would not pass Core Web Vitals um, for desktop views because uh, I'm failing on that cumulative layout shift. So couple of reasons for why that's happening and there's some good strategies there involved uh, so bear with me a moment here while this loads up so I can get back to, to jabbering on here um, but uh, basically this this course so someone in scoring only maybe a 40 or something like that but not hitting all these other metrics would actually pass uh, core web vitals assessment potentially instead of my 93 so this is why it's really important not just to focus on that <clears throat> The reason that that score is so high is the cumulative layout shift only makes up a part of your uh, score. So when it's looking at like the weighted score here, um, I have that over here. So here's a lighthouse calculator. So this takes a look at and tells you here's the, the weighting for all of the scores off on this right hand side. So you can see here the cumulative layout shift only accounts for 15% of my score. So I had a 93 because the total blocking time and the largest contentful paint were very, very low. They load very, very fast. Uh, the biggest reason for that being uh, where I had such a good score was because if you take a look at this, largest contentful paint, 25%, total blocking time, 30%. Those two metrics constitute 55% of the overall score. And so, um, you know, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this and I'll show you a real quick improvement that's simple to make. Um, you'll probably need a developer if you don't already like have these skills or something like that or have maybe one on, on the team kind of type thing. But I'll show you where an easy win for you to focus on this is going to come from. Excuse me. So I'm going to jump back to mobile. Oh man, look at that. Had a nice, nice jump there in the score. Um, so you'll see this is an 82 for performance on mobile. Um, and that feels very, very high, uh, higher than it should be kind of type thing. Um, oh man, this is, okay. Yeah, so it's struggling today, folks. Uh, I, I'm, I'm using, a, I, I have a different uh, computer typically to use for streaming. Uh, and so I'm kind of on the, the, mobile, the mobile setup here. Um, and we are getting the spinning wheel of death here. So if I do lose the stream, I will try to key it back up here. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't happen. <laughs> um, but we're going to try to uh, at least talk about this stuff here. So it seems like it caught up. Um, but I was going to run this again. So I'm probably like asking for this to crash, right? So it's pretty consistently in the 60s uh, at the current outset. So I'm kind of surprised that it hit an 80 even there at all. Um, but wanted to kind of show you real quick once this does key up. So 73, all right, we did a little bit worse. Um, biggest reason again, this largest contentful paint and total blocking time makes up 55% of the score. And, uh, you know, obviously the largest contentful paint's not looking great here at, you know, this 5.1 second load. Um, but total blocking time, which is 30% of the score, looks great. 
So I want to like basically just cover like the real reason that this looks like this is Google sends a bot to your page and it kind of tests the page out, see how fast it loads. It gathers all this data based on these specific metrics that are tied back to your core web vitals. And then it kind of reports back, right? And so people always ask, you know, well, why is my mobile always like so much worse than my desktop? There's a couple of reasons for that, but the biggest reason is you can see down here, there's some other really good information uh, that's really easy to pass over here um, that talks about like, you know, kind of how this test was run. And you'll see here, it'll even tell you what kind of, um, you know, what kind of uh, processor was used or what kind of like device was used. So in this instance, it says it's an emulated Moto G4 with Lighthouse 9.6.2. So basically the the phone that's pretending to be emulating here uh, when it crawls the website gathers information about how it's loading is a moto g4 so i was like i don't even know what a moto g4 is i just tell people all the time it's a really old phone but i thought for the purpose of this webinar i actually look it up and so this is a moto g4 and i just went ahead and compared uh, it to like current iphone just so that way you have an idea on what that looks like um, so this goes over information about the processor and all this other stuff. But basically, this phone was released back in like 2016. And so this is uh, what you're getting here. Oops, I thought it had the release date on here. Um, bop, 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 bop. Yeah. Sorry, I thought it had the release date on there. There we go. Released in 2016. So just to compare and contrast here, I actually couldn't pull one up uh, with how old the processor was. It was like a six Snapdragon six something. Um, so the oldest one I could, farthest back I could go was an 801. Uh, but comparing the two, you can take a look at what this looks like. And these are just general websites. You can just Google like comparisons and stuff like that. Um, and that's something, you know, <laughs> like you can see here, huge differences in like how they perform. So it's one of those things, I'm gonna try closing some of these extra windows because my computer is performing so slow at the moment. Um, but it's one of those things where the reason that it's showing up so slow and why we might have such a huge disparity between scores is because the emulated device that it's using to give us that report is a very old, very slow device. And so that's something to where comparing those things to today, it's kind of apples to oranges, right? Um, so yeah, really wanted to just showcase some simple changes there. Um, as far as um, what has been made over time with this reporting, uh, I think it's really helpful to kind of take a look at that. So if we scroll down here a little bit, you can even see this nice little picture of like these screenshots of as it loads. And then something that's really easy for folks to skip over, but I would really encourage you to do, is take a look at how to show audits relevant to, and right now it has all. So it's got like all this stuff you know, you probably have no idea what it is. That's okay. That's your developer's job, right? Um, but it's something that I would suggest, you know, you, you really only like filter this out to try to see if there's something you can kind of like gather, kind of understand from here. Um, so for instance, LCP, largest contentful paint, um, that's probably one of the things that we want to take a look at, right? We want to take a look at this specifically just because, uh, you know, between total blocking time and the largest contentful paint, uh, that constitutes 55% of your score. So if you can focus on those two big metrics, that's something where maybe you can make the most impact. So it talks about eliminating render blocking or render blocking resources. Um, and then it also tells you what the largest contentful paint element is. So that largest contentful paint, again, is that first element that pops up in the viewport or what we would call above the fold. So it picks basically the biggest image or sometimes the biggest text, uh, which hint, hint, that's actually a good way to improve your LCP is to serve like a large header first on mobile. Um, I would not recommend changing up content between mobile and um, desktop when possible, just because Google like prefers that you serve content for both the same. But in some instances, it makes more sense to do that. Um, we can actually see a little bit of a bump there. So here um, it says, hey, like this image is the first one. That's helpful for us to know um, as well. But you can take a look as well at some of this other stuff. You can simply out shift, all that fun stuff. Sorry, I'm gonna start moving through some of this because I don't wanna spend too much time. Uh, but I do want to point out here as well, uh, this is helpful. So as we scroll through this, I selected all. And so you'll see here uh, the 
a note or a comment was the largest contentful paint image was lazily loaded. So this is a strategy that a lot of developers will use to help with the performance that will basically say, hey, like, you know, don't show the image, don't load this in until we've got it loaded kind of type thing. Um, and so there's some actually helpful things that developers can do now, but it helps with the essentially the, the rendering of the page or making sure that other stuff loads in as it needs to and the other stuff down below, below the fold, can wait to be loaded. The problem is when there's just like a blanket, like we're gonna lazy load every single image. Well, that's not a good strategy because essentially what's going to happen is if it is above the fold, remember our largest contentful pane is 25% of that uh, you know, core web vitals uh, assessment that ends up being part of a page speed score. Um, you know, like, so if it's above the fold and it loads slowly, like last, right, uh, that's not helpful. So one thing you can do, and I'm just going to like pop in here real quick. Um, so this is something that I do as just like a enhancement on some pages. Um, and again, I just, I just popped into my own page here or my own website. Um, Again, that's on there. I have uh, some specific things set up so that way we can take a look at that um, update to see kind of like how it impacts here and see if we can't change it to where that, that first image is not lazily loaded. Thanks for bearing with me a little bit on the time here. So, <laughs> If I uh, stop getting the spinning wheel of death here. Um, so you can see here, at least in the initial outset, uh, that performance jumped up to an 83 on this new test because I basically have something set up to where, you know, it's going to ignore that um, lazy loading attribute. So you can see here the largest contentful paint, we cut that time in half. And that's something that Google's a real big fan of. You can even see some of our rendering blocking resources is not as significantly impacted. And again, that's because it's not having to wait for other stuff before it's going out and keying that up. And you can see here that that, that metric is gone. So that's something that I would make sure um, talk to your developer about. It's an easy implementation that you can do as far as uh, making that improvement there uh, as well. So we still got this uh, good, good score here. So I did wanna go over this. So this is another <clears throat> project that I worked on where page speed was part of uh, the scope. And you'll notice here, I wanted to scroll down and show this real quick because it's really easy to get focused on this 40. It shows up as red, it doesn't look great, right? But the really good thing in this instance is that the core web vitals assessment is passing. That's what we want to see. So in the instance of, you know, just trying to make sure we're focusing on the right, the right series of metrics, um, core web vitals is significantly more important than uh, what we have down there for the page speed score. And that's why Google has even over time, this used to be where, I don't know if y'all have used this in the past, but the page speed insights tool used to be, you'd load it up <clears throat> and it'd show the score at the very, very top. Um, and so it has those since evolved over time to where now they serve the core web assessment first, because that's the thing that they want to continue to showcase as being the most important thing. Not so much so um, your, your page speed score itself. So to show you what this looks like in some other instances as well, um, you know, again, in the 40s, it's possible, you know, 80s for desktop, you know, and we're passing. This is another site that I've worked with. So just so that way you can see what that looks like. Now, I do, again, want to reiterate the whole, like, content is king thing, uh, because that is pretty important to point out. Um, so obviously something like all birds, um, you know, everybody knows who Allbirds is. If you've, you've done Shopify for any period of time, uh, they're often referred to a great deal. You know, they went public, they're doing a, amazing things in the space, um, but they're obviously, they're failing their core web vitals and their page speed score is five. Um, and so it's something though that like clearly, like Allbirds, like this really big company doing super well, um, they have some really good developers working on their teams they're not super focused on this. Uh, part of that is because they're nailing content. And so if they're nailing content, it's something that they're not having to worry about as much. Um, typically what I argue or what I suggest um, is that like it's probably making your ads a little bit more expensive um, and a couple of other things. So, you know, improving ROI and focusing on um, page speed optimization and those sorts of things is helpful there. 
uh, because you're just going to perform better organically when we also have core web vitals on our side. But, you know, company the size of Allbirds, <clears throat> excuse me, and those sorts of things, um, clearly they're doing very, very well. They're nailing content. Uh, and they're they're at the top of the top of the charts here, so to speak, for all this stuff. So um, it's not something that you should necessarily like lose sleep over if you're already like doing fairly well. Um, it's something that you can do as an improvement. So, uh, like I said, uh, usually when I talk to a lot of folks about um, you know page speed optimization, core web vitals, things of this nature, um, it, it's something that uh, comes up because uh, people are might have heard something about like, oh, Amazon shaved off like a second on their load time or half a second on their load time and they made, you know, X million dollars more a year. Well, you have to look at traffic and revenue in the grand scheme of things there. So the improvements that they can make um, there is something to where it's so significant for, you know, they've got millions and millions of views a day uh, and they're doing millions and millions of dollars um, like a minute, right? Or something like that. And so it's not something where, you know, you're necessarily going to see that. So you might see <clears throat> a bump or an increase, uh, but it's not something that you're going to see millions of dollars from. So again, it, it's just part of your, it should be part of your strategy. It should be part of that. Um, okay. And so had a question, uh, in the chat here from Brian is core with else pass fail and individual metrics that are delivered based on that single page or the website. Uh, thank you, Brian. That was a really, really great question because I didn't do a good job covering that. And so uh, let's take a look here. Allbirds is a great example, um, you know, here because this uh, is differentiated here based on the tool. So that's Core Web Vitals Assessment. Discover what your user are experiencing. It's really easy to miss, but there's this URL and then there's the origin as a whole. So there are actually two sets of scores here. So when we run this right now, allbirds.com here, and it lands on this, if we do have a sufficient amount of traffic, this is initially what it scores it, or shows us. Like for this specific page, there's this core web vitals assessment um, and it's failed. Uh, but then also we can look at how does Google view the website as a whole. So this is the, the culmination and the accumulation of the website in general. Um, so this arguably is a, a much more important stat. Um, and I have seen some where we're failing on a certain page, uh, but we are passing overall as the site. So Google does kind of like look at that as like cumulative data um, where the information is really, really specific, um, you know, like kind of like providing all that information um, and like getting that score is kind of like part of that. So, sorry, I stumbled quite a bit there. Basically, you know, if you're looking at smaller individual pages, uh, we might have a couple outliers where a cumulative layout shift is an issue, but Google will take kind of like, well, we don't have an issue at all in all these other pages. And so like the cumulative look or overall site um, is still performing well where a cumulative layout shift is not an issue. So I think, I think maybe that's a, that's a little bit more specific. Um, yeah, Brian, so as far as um, examples of how all birds is nailing content. No, uh, I cannot give good examples on that. So I, I do um, technical SEO. I don't do content based SEO. So uh, what that typically means is like, I'm, I'm much more focused on making sure like kind of like the structure and the tools and everything else is communicating well to be indexed properly with Google. Uh, but as far as folks that are nailing it, you know, in content world, um, for SEO, that's not something that I'm probably an expert on necessarily. Um, it's just something that I've seen when I've uh, read about um, <clears throat> other sites and those sorts of things on, you know, Google, on Shopify, on other big commerce platforms and those sorts of things. Um, that's something where they're frequently referenced as people who are just like really killing it in the space. Um, they also have a very, they're a very niche audience in the, in the sense that they focus specifically on um, sustainability. And so obviously in the instances where you can be more specific, you can be more niche and speak specifically to that audience. Um, Alberts is practically a household name at this point. And so that's something to where um, their, their content is all linked in really well for that. They'll have a lot of like really good backlinks and those sorts of things from other websites. Again, I'm not a content guy. Um, so I probably can't really give you good examples or speak in a very educated uh, format on that. Uh, my, since my focus is more on the technical, um, I think folks that do the content based, uh, usually you have to find something that's like, that's kind of their wheelhouse. So otherwise I'd probably just uh, really not be able to provide um, a good 
suggestion there. It's just more so one of those things where like we can tell that they're nailing content and those sorts of things because of how consistently you can find them if you're looking for anything that's sustainability apparel related, right? Um, okay, great questions though, Brian. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I can't be more specific on that. I, I wish I was more educated on that topic. Um, okay, so same thing here. You want to make sure you check both for desktop. Um, we covered that you can you can view this. Um, and then there are some instances where you're not going to have like a this URL and an origin response. Uh, so um, that might be something whoops, to take in consideration as well. Sometimes an individual page actually won't have something. You see this a lot on like collections pages or maybe like new blog pages and stuff like that. Um, but it's not necessarily a, a bad thing. It means overall the site has you know, sufficient traffic to give a core web vitals assessment, but that individual page may not. Um, another reason why I really like the whole idea on focusing on, well, let's go ahead and get off this guy. Um, why I really like focusing on the core web vitals assessment as opposed to page speed. Uh, it's actually not too hard as a developer to trick page speed. So page speed score itself basically is just, we're just trying to trick a Google bot in that instance. And so there are actually ways for developers just to, you know, write some JavaScript and that basically says, hey, uh, if it's the Google bot, uh, try and lighthouse, you know, trying to like scrape the website, you know, get all these metrics or whatever, uh, go ahead and don't load all this other stuff uh, to make sure that it loads super fast and we get a really high score. And so that's when you'll see these conflated scores of like, you know, 80 and 90 on mobile and those sorts of things or whatever, uh, but your users might still be experiencing a lot of issues. So the core web vitals assessment, you actually cannot trick Google on that, right? Because it's based on a culmination of actual users experiencing the web. Um, so that goes from a person with a older, slower phone will actually experience your website differently than someone on a new iPhone. Uh, so just something to take into consideration. Most folks really only have one or two generations back of an iPhone. iPhone still owns a majority of the market. Uh, but for Android users like myself, you know, uh, it's usually typically common for folks that they only have a phone that's several years old um, versus the one that they're using in testing is like six years old, right? <clears throat> so, um, and then I wanted to cover some additional uh, tools and resources here um, as well before I jump off here. Um, and so... Uh, this is another really good tool to use since we talked about how it's really, inverse, really important to have, um, you know, a mobile friendly website. Uh, you can just drop in, you know, any, any kind of uh, URL here. Let me grab all birds again. I'm picking on all birds today. I'm wearing some all birds. So that's, um, that's a... Uh, not, not to say that I'm trying to dog on them or anything. They're just a good example because usually everybody knows who they are. Jim Shark's another one. Chubby Shorts, they're another one. Olipop's another one. You know, there's a lot of really big names here, but Auburn starts with an A, and I'm wearing Allbirds, so we'll just go ahead and run a couple of tests here. And again, this is something that uh, you'll get in the Google Search Console itself. It'll actually run reports when you have a mobile-friendly uh, I can't remember the name of the report itself necessarily, but it will actually use this tool. Uh, so you can verify if it says you have a problem with like your mobile uh, view on a certain page or those sorts of things. Uh, it'll actually tell you if there is an issue. And then if you want to test it yourself, it'll link out to this guy. Yeah, so you can see here at least the page is mobile friendly. So good job, Alberts. Um, you know, you can test a page, screenshot, all this fun stuff. Um, there's a bunch of, of handy stuff here that you can take a look at. Now, as far as understanding uh, some of the cumulative layout shift, um, and I use my website here as an example uh, on this one, but this is just a really good developer tool if you want to call it that, but um, other, other folks can use this, like anyone can use this tool, uh, but it's for that cumulative layout shift, I think that's one of the harder metrics for a lot of folks to understand unless you kind of like visually see it. And so this does a really good job of doing that. I think it's really handy um, to be able to just like punch in a URL, you click generate here, and then it just kind of shows you where all that travel is occurring on your page. And so that's like when the page is loading, 
basically there's the initial load and then as things load if things move around a little bit and it pushes content down below it that's when we start to get that cumulative layout shift metric and i'm showing on my website just to show you not everyone's perfect and i haven't had time to take uh, any kind of focus into this here. So don't feel bad if it's occurring on your website, just understand that it will impact uh, your core web vitals assessment. Okay. Might kill some of these other pages here. Um, this just has to deal with the scoring. I, I really touched base on this already. So just wanted to make folks aware of like how the performance score is weighted, all this stuff that it kicked out to the calculator. There are different versions of it as well. So there could be instances where you haven't touched anything and uh, Lighthouse actually has like, or PageSpeed Insights has updated to a different version of Lighthouse that might use a different series of metrics. So that's something to take into consideration as well. Over time, these metrics, like I said, they're ever evolving, they're ever changing. So just something to be aware of when it comes to how your website is performing there. And that's the calculator. Another really great tool that I like a lot um, is going to be uh, this guy here. This is for, ba, 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 ba. Oh, I guess I didn't have it in there. Um, this is going to be the GT Metrics website. So this also uses the Google Lighthouse tool in the background, but rather than the PageSpeed Insights report that it gives, it actually pops out with a letter grade couple of really helpful views as well that I really do like uh, that I'd really recommend you taking a look and this is a free tool you can do it paid um, they have a couple of cool things with the paid tool as well where you can kind of change to the mobile layout a couple of other things as well so these are really really good options for you to um, use these items if you're trying to run speed tests on your own store just to give you some insights as to things that you can change and fix yourself so it gives you kind of a general grade. And again, this is per page, but you can also do some comparing where you can run different pages. So this would be a really good way to do like um, your home collections and product pages or something like that, um, or even a pre and post uh, you know, test as well. Um, you can do that uh, using the preview URLs in Shopify, but just understand that your metrics um, basically won't look identical because Google actually, or Google, I'm sorry, Shopify loads some extra stuff uh, when it comes to those preview URLs, basically for like that admin bar and a couple of other things. So your, your metrics will play around a little bit. So it's, it's, but it's a good way to like do some quick testing. This kind of shows you what that looks like. Um, you know, and you can play around with some of these other metrics. I, I take some time to come in here and look at this. I think this is a lot more friendly than the page speed, um, insights tool. However, the page bin insights tool, I would argue is kind of like the end all be all just because. Um, it is the one that gives you a core web vitals assessment. And that's the thing that we really, really care about uh, because that's what impacts uh, search. So the thing I really like, if you look at these tabs, if you take a look at the waterfall, uh, this is one of my favorite things to take a look at, um, particularly when you're looking at things like images, slowing websites down and those sorts of things are really heavy JavaScript. Um, so third-party scripts, a lot of times from apps and things of that nature that we're getting. But you can actually, if you click on this guy from size, you can actually sort these based on the size that they are, which I think is super helpful. Um, so I, I really like to do this, you know, so if we're, you know, trying to like scroll through here and find some really big images, uh, cause that does happen uh, wherever possible. We want to try to like serve an image that's under uh, this, this hundred kilobyte range, um, you know, when possible. So, I mean, sometimes it doesn't happen uh, and that's, that's okay. Um, realistically only having one that's over that and the rest of these in the 17s, I mean, that's that's looking really, really good uh, when it comes to that. Um, kind of the same thing uh, with JavaScript and stuff. If you like look through here, see if there's any like really heavy like third-party scripts or something like that that are getting interjected here. That's just something to be aware of or take consideration of. Okay, so I've got... A little bit like right around five minutes left here um, for the hour and so um, yeah I want to take a look at that and see what's going on here um, Brian you had another question so are developers able to trick GT metrics I see developers who help with core web vitals and speed tests mentioned that they can improve the GT metrics score so yeah so basically you know because I mentioned um, you know uh, GT metrics is using the lighthouse tool in the background so Lighthouse um, is an open source tool. Open source tools are used all throughout the web. Uh, 
So I'll take a look here. So here's Chrome Lighthouse here. This is the actual tool itself. Um, it's promoted by Google. It's an open source tool. Um, so anybody can like download and use this, right? Kind of type of thing. Uh, but a lot of, uh, you know, different companies use it for like, you know, stuff like this. They build a tool on this open source software and they put their own spin on it, which is all GT Metrics has done. I think they do a good job and it's nice that they do it this way. Um, it even tells you right here what version of Lighthouse they're running. Um, but yes, it's, it's possible, especially because, so, you know, the GT Metrics doesn't pull a, um, a Core Web Vitals assessment. So that's possible to do, um, but like, you know, because they don't and they're just relying on Lighthouse, yes, like they could technically trick that now. That is not to say that all developers are doing this. I'm just saying from the perspective of it is possible um, and why the focus should move away from that page speed score itself only, more so to a discussion on improving those core web vitals. If we're not focusing on core web vitals, we could be, you know, improving the score, but that's not going to necessarily mean much. Um, so it's not the best, it's not the best, you know, return on your investment for focusing on speed optimization um, because if we're only focused on that page speed score itself, we're really missing like the forest for the trees in that instance in the sense that like that core web vitals assessment is the most important piece there. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, but yeah, that's, um, like I said, I, I don't mean to dog on that. For There's, there's some developers out there doing good work. Um, you know, there should be, you should see a natural lift with the page speed score when you improve core web files, that should happen. But my my discussion or expectation or suggestion to folks is always not to like expect in the 90s. The 90s isn't what we need to shoot for. Um, we could hit 90s if you want to. It's just something that's not really necessary. It's more about passing the core web files. Okay. Um, all right, so I hope that helps answer your question there, Brian. Um, yeah, I don't know if we have any other questions or if I need to, anybody has anything specific on Core Web Vitals uh, to take a look at um, specifically, uh, you know, like a website or something like that or a tool. Okay. All right. Yep, I think I think might have got everything here. Like I said, there's a little bit of a delay in the uh, in the stream, so hopefully I don't miss anything here and cut anybody off. But if you do need to, definitely feel free. Um, you know, just send me an email either through my website or Taylor at thepagesmedia.com is my email. Um, and also, uh, if you would, I'm gonna put up a link here for a post webinar survey. I'd really really be grateful for folks to. Uh, Kind of give me some suggestions or insights as to what I can do better, um, how I can be a little bit more focused on these, or maybe provide some more specific examples. I'm also kicking around the idea of just doing these as a pre-record instead of a live thing, uh, kind of to avoid, uh, like today, uh, being a little bit mobile and not having access to some of my other equipment and stuff and having to do uh, this kind of a setup or whatever. But uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope this brought you value today. And uh, yeah, hope you have a hope you have a great day.